All right, guys, welcome to the channel. Well, on popular request and demand, uh, I was asked to actually make some of these carpenter bee traps. Now, you've seen the videos. They actually do work, and they do help around your home. I've not had no bees drilling holes everywhere, but they can slip one in here and there if you don't watch them. But anyway, we're going to make some today. I'm going to make a total of about two or three of them. And it's just a plain old piece of uh, four by four pine post, not treated. They don't like treated that good, just a regular old pine post. And you can get you can get a piece of cedar out of the woods. They like cedar the best. So if you could get cedar, that'd be really great. But these are not that expensive. This is just a four foot piece I cut high to hand. So stick around today and uh, we're going to make a couple of them. All right, you've got your wood, you've got your print here, if you printed it off, you know, offline or whatever, and uh, you just mark off how many you want to make, every five inches. We're going to make however you want to make, we'll make three of them. Okay. Down here and mark them. And if you're like me, I don't have a great big saw to go all the way through these. You could do it by hand, but I just do it electric with a, band, a skill saw. So I just come over here and mark them all the way around. Mark them all the way around because you'll have to cut them. Your blade will not go through all of it at once. Said you could do this by hand. It's 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 not rocket science. And make sure all your lines match up. So when you cut it, you ain't got such a mess. You have to sand it, to make it pretty. Now, like I said you don't have to use this. This is a four by four post. You don't have to use that. You could get you a piece of cedar fence post or a piece out of the woods and make it. It just looks natural but just around a, around your home would look a little more dressier. So there you go. We're going to go to cut. Alright guys, we've we've marked it off here according to the size we want by the print and stuff. So you, you, know, so you use a hand saw and it does real well. It's just a little bit time consuming but they do just as good. Just for time's sake I'm going to use a skill saw here. Like I said, they won't go all the way through, so I'll have to go around it. And if you're real good, you'll hit, he'll come out looking even without having sanded too much. See that. But that's no problem. Just dress it up on a sander just a little bit. I can dress it up here. Oh, it's, it don't have to be perfect, but that's good. That's where we cut them. We'll cut us a couple more here. Alrighty, next thing you want to do, you got your blocks cut. You want to find the center of it. And by doing that, just taking a straight edge and going from corner to corner. And where the X is, it's at the center of the hole. Okay? Now, we're going to use these. We're going to use these to glue in right there. Little pop, little old plastic pop lids. Okay? And the print says an inch and an eighth, though. You can go an inch and an eighth and they'll push in there tight, but I'm going to do mine out like an inch and a quarter. Give me a little slot because I'm going to glue them in anyway. So you'll have to drill that hole first after you find your center. And what I've been using is a hose up. Hose saw. What 
you want to do you're just you just want to drill it just deep enough for this to to clear the bottom just a little bit more okay and we've got that drill so you have to drill that first if you don't if you drill the other one you can't drill that it just wobble around so drill this biggest hole first and then we'll drill the center hole with this one inch bit and it'll go right down through there and hit it eat out what you just drilled anyway so okay you've got your hole drilled for these so next thing you want to do you're going to drill your center hole where the, the bees go into the big hole so we'll lay a couple of these out of the way and what you do, I got a paddle bit, one inch paddle bit. That's what the print says. Now these paddle bits, and remember these are just five inches long, and your paddle bit may be a lot longer than that. So you kind of see about where you're at on the ruler. So I just need to go about an inch from the end of my shank, and I'll, I'll be far enough. So we'll drill them out. Just got to be careful, because these twos will hurt you. We need to be a scrap. Within, drill them within an inch at the top. If you go too much further, you don't. And you see right there, that will push right in there because you've allowed for that first. You might have to trim it with your little knife or something, get it perfect. But, you know, nothing's perfect. Like I said, the only reason I'm doing this out here is to keep from making such a big mess in the garage. The vi a vice is the best way to do it. More or less just dressing it up. Okay. Okay, you've got all your holes drilled. You've got your hole drilled for your, uh, your cap. Your bottle screws into it now. You want to, it might be a little rough right here. What I usually do is just take a pocket knife or razor blade and just clean up that edge a little bit. And you take a wood file, just dress it up inside, make it a little smoother. And you'll have to do this a couple of times. When you drill them side holes, you'll have to clean up where the burrs is. But it's no big deal. So we're moving on to the next. Well, you've got your holes drilled now, and you've cleaned them out, the edges of them here. I would make them an inch and an eighth. Inch and a quarter just wobbles a little bit too big, but you're going to glue it anyway. But inch and an eighth, you'd push it in there tight with glue. It would never come out. Anyway, what we want to do next, we want to drill our side holes. And what we do, whatever hole you just drilled, it don't matter the measuring tape or a stick or your screwdriver, you see where it comes out here, and you just kind of mark it on the sides you want to drill your hole. You know how far it comes up, so it can't go up into nothing in the wood. So what I do then, you know, you've got a five inch block, the print says two inches, come down to about two and a half inches. Mark it where you want your hole. There's one side. There's the other high side. And you know it's a one inch hole, so just go halfway. Center yourself up. And 
more days. Now, to get this started, you want to drill them at an angle. If you don't, they'll see the light and they'll go out back out the way they come. So you want to kind of put it at an angle, and I'll show you. Start your hole. Now you start your hole a little bit, and then you're able to to turn it. Now go to about I 45 degrees up to this. It'll come up to this mark you made where the top of your hole is. Take your time. Here, it through. Now be careful with these old wood. I like to set the clutch a little bit. You know, we'll hit a give before it makes your hand give. Do the same thing on the other side. Start your hole and then turn. See? Dress it up just a little bit. So there you go. We'll do clean it up here a little bit. But there you go. You basically made it right there. So, you got your hole in. It goes up at an angle. The hole they want to come into. They can't see the light because there's a big shadow on it. So, we'll move on. After you've drilled your holes in all your blocks, you've got the angle you want. You want to take a old file or something down in there because it'll leave big wood chips and splinters where the holes meet and clean that up the best you can. You know how it is when you saw through wood. We'll leave big chips and that might might not be able to get through the hole. So you can't see that, but see it. Big chunks of wood splinters out. That's why I do this outside. Best to do this completely on a vise. But there you go. And I'll show you the next step I usually do. Guys, usually what I do before I go any further, you've got all your wood chips out and you've got your holes cut. You want to clean it up a little bit, dress it up. You don't have to, but usually you can't meet this saw or the steel saw perfectly. So I usually just dress it up with a little old bit thing. You see what I'm talking about, see? You can't get perfectly with them steel saws. They leave a little ridge or something where they connect it. You just try and dress it up. You can dress it up with a solid again. But Just dressing it up. As you know, you hate to hang you hate to hang stuff around your house anyway. And you want to look halfway decent. See why I'm doing this outside? It makes such a mess in the house. Rob. And I usually in the spring of the year where they get nasty and dirty hanging on the house all year, and you put them up next year, I usually clean them up and shine them up a little bit. Make them bees think they brand new wood guys. Oh yummy.
There we go. You can see. There we go. We made it. Okay, guys, we're ready to glue our caps in. It's the old plastic cap that you allow for. Just take you an old bottle. It's better than holding your finger and getting glue all over you. And don't put these on real tight because you're going to screw them back off. But this, uh, this glue guns, what I usually do is just when your glue gun gets hot, just put your fire mount around the sides. I might even put some around the edge of this. Yeah, you don't want to screw them taps on there tight because you're going to screw that back off of that mess and you grip glue up. That way, putting this on here, you're able to hold it at the position you want. And that glue sets up pretty quick. Get it straight. Nothing's perfect. Look at it, it looks. Looks pretty straight. And let it sit for a few minutes. Screw it off. And get the other ones. Looks pretty good. So basically, there you go. Guys, you've let the glue set up good on your caps. They yeah, look pretty good. You've got them straight. All I like to do then is you take your about you to a seven eighths bit, and you want to drill your cap out. So what you want to do, you're trying to find the center of that cap, just move your drill around to where it looks like it's center all the way around, and then just drill it. Once you drill through, you might wobble down in there to get all that where you just burned it up. And that extra glue is slid down in there. And you can see, you can see what I'm talking about. You just may have to take your little something and push down in there and get that extra glue out. But you want that hole clean. It's just barely enough for your threads. So, you screw that baby in there. There you go. This is set. One last final step. What you want to do, if you can keep up with your tube, you want to go to the top now. And make you a little spot in the middle. Don't draw all the way across. It just makes an old ugly line. Just enough to, to find your center, a little X here. Okay. Then, we find these right here. Now, you can use, well, I thought I put one in my pocket. You can use them little fence staples, but you know how a nail is when it gets hot and cold. Them, the weight of this and them nails, they'll just work loose and fall out. These screws will not come loose. These eye screws will not come loose. So, find my tools here. I take a little bit that's just a little bit smaller, just a little bit smaller than the thread shank diameter of that. When you found the X, just drill it down a little bit. Drill it down much, quarter inch or a little bit better. It's just the wrong time of year really to be making these. This is a wintertime project. Because get that started. And just screw it in there. You should have enough wood left over the way we measured it to uh, do everything you want. But there you go. 
You can use a big fence staple, and they, they hook good, but they will pull out eventually. These will not pull out. They won't screw backwards. That's the reason I like to use them. Guys, right here is your finished product. You're hanging it from the house right there. There it is. The holes go up at an angle into the hole. You've glued everything. Just clean it up good. Don't never paint it or stain it. You want it natural wood so the bees that attracts them. And there you go. These will last you many a year. You take care of them. Now what you want to do with these things, this time of year, these bees have done made their holes and made their nests. They're in their nest right now, okay? You've got to make these in late winter and put these up the first sign the first sign of warm weather in, in March. If you don't, they'll then be making holes. So you got to get these up before they get out moving around. So this gives them an opportunity to get in here. And that's what you got to do. But these right here, you take these down when it starts cooling down in the summer, and early fall, take these down, clean them up a little bit, put them in a box, and in the spring, do the same thing. And it ain't nothing to collect these things, believe me. And uh, there you go. This will last you many seasons. I hope this helps you. Hope this helps you a lot around the house. Guys, hope you enjoyed this. This is by popular demand. This is the wrong time of year to be making these. You can see how hot it is. But it's not a big deal to make them. It's no big deal at all. This makes probably, I've made two dozen of these now. And they really work. I could take you around the house showing you, but you've already seen the video. My bottles are almost half full, some of them. So, hope you've enjoyed. Be careful using these power tools because they will hurt you. All it takes is one time. So, y'all take it easy, and I'll see you next time.